tell the story from start? Cancer, first of all, my, my father had the same kind of cancer, so I thoroughly believe it's genetic. Um, my cancer was first discovered uh, back in around 2003 when I had uh, a colonoscopy and uh, he discovered that uh, I had colon cancer and but it was small enough that he could take care of it without having to dissect my colon and give me a colostomy bag and everything like that so I thought, hey, good, he got rid of it successfully. Then a couple of years later, uh, during um, was it either a, a CT scan or an x-ray, one or the other, they shot me from here down to get my colon, and um, they caught a little piece of my lung in the shot, and there was part of the tumor there. So they immediately re-aimed <laughs> for a shot of up here and they said, oh my God, you've got something up there the size of a tangerine and um, let's talk about this. So uh, basically what it boiled down to was it meant the, uh, a lobectomy, which is exactly what my father had exact same thing except his lobectomy back then, back in those old days, was a scar from here all the way to the upper back and they had to break ribs and everything to get in there, you know. Nowadays, it's wonderful. They make three inch long incisions in various places here. They put a camera in one and instruments in another and one is a drainage tube and, and probably the other one for sucking out the lung, I don't know. <laughs> but I told my surgeon, I told my surgeon that I, I wanted to keep my lung and I wanted to make a Chinese lantern out of it, blow it up and, you know. But he just looked at me like I'm crazy. <laughs> I, obviously he didn't understand my humor. He'd never seen one of my movies. <laughs> so uh, I never did get my lung. Uh, but uh, it was interesting. I went through it. And then after that, uh, I had to have seven months of chemotherapy. And I said, what happens if I don't have this chemotherapy? Because they told me the side effects, you know, dead feet, um, a couple of other things uh, they told me about, um, uh, diabetes. And um, I said, well, what are my alternatives? How long will I, will I have? I, I just got blunt. If I don't have this chemo, how long do I have? Two to three years. And I said, well, let's go for it. So uh, that really knocked the wind out of my sails. It was, a, it was called aggressive chemotherapy which meant that I had to wear a pump and I had to have a pick line in my arm going all the way into my heart. And I wore this pick line for seven months. The chemicals are so strong that it destroys your vein. That's why they put it right into the first chamber of the heart where it's a little larger and gets yep, you know, yep, yeah. mixed. Yep, yep. Diluted, if you will. It's seven, diluted, yes. Seven months of that? Seven months, yeah. Oh, um, yeah. I, and where, were you, the where were you living then? In a tent. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's right. I was camping out with uh, my younger son and um, looking for a place. And, and, and going for treatment. And going for treatment. Tent, going for... Because it was in town. And so I wanted to stay close, yet I still wanted to look for a place around here. And uh, uh, so. In any case, I would drive my son into school, do my breathing exercises and everything while sitting in the car waiting for him and everything. And uh, 
blowing the little ball so it floats just right, and uh, you know that, you know the routine. Anyway, um, there was one funny moment uh, when I was still living in the house uh, with the pump. This whole thing, I mean, this was, you know, the whole procedure was a few years. Mm -hmm. That's why I disappeared. I couldn't walk around with a pump and stuff like that. Uh, there was funny moments, uh, like with this, in the middle of the night, I would wake up and have to go pee. And I'd get up and I'd hear this clunk behind me. And that tug on my arm. And I'd look back and, oh, sure enough, there's my pump, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Fell off the... <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'd drag it. You're like my... anchors. Mm. So anyway, I got over that. Uh, thank goodness. I still go in for PET scans and CAT scans uh, every once in a while. In fact, I have one scheduled for next month. Uh, I just lay back and go through the tubes, lolly lolly. I'm so used to it now, you know. But so far they haven't found anything. <laughs>